Hello, Bharat Garu. Good evening. How are you? Evening, sir. My name is. Uh... <laughs> you are logging in with Ravi Krishna. You can begin, sir. Yeah, I think Manali, you can start. Uh, I think some more participants are going to join. Let them join. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, do you want to start? Okay, you have started recording. Okay. So I'll go, I'll go ahead and start. So good morning or good evening, everyone. Um, we hope all of you are doing well and staying safe. Thank you for joining us today. We have gathered here to learn more about one of India's premier institute, Gandhi Institute of Technology and Management, or GITAMS, mission and vision regarding achieving excellence and evolving as a global player in imparting quality education and creating thematic frontline research. Uh, we are honored to have uh, with us Mr. Shri Bharat, President of Geetam, Professor uh, Jay Shankar Varier, Pro VC of Geetam, uh, Professor Gautama Rai Yaju, Dean of Management, uh, Dr. Subramaniam, Dean of Science, with whom I have mostly collaborated with. Uh, Dr. Vijay Shankar, Dean of Engineering, and uh, they would be engaging with you in the next hour. Now, going a little bit more into SciRoy, as you all know, uh, SciRoy, or Science and Research Opportunities in India, is a volunteer-driven, not-for-profit organization and serves as a gateway for young scientists, engineers, and entrepreneurs abroad to access professional opportunities in India. Um, let me just quickly share my screen. I had a few slides. So we started collaborating with uh, Geetam since last year when we conducted our first virtual recruitment drive. Uh, Geetam was a highly uh, engaging and effective recruiter last year uh, in 2020 and offered uh, final faculty level positions to seven of the SIRA uh, candidates who interviewed with them. It has been a pleasure to work with uh, you, Dr. Subramaniam and others from Geetam and till now, and we are looking forward to continue this uh, collaboration this year as well. Um, so SIRA is excited to announce that the registration for the second recruitment drive is open, is now open uh, till May 24th. Uh, Geetam is one of the many recruiters who are joining, and uh, they have multiple positions available. Uh, individuals currently working outside India and actively seeking job opportunities in Indian STEM sector are eligible to apply. Uh, you can apply for the positions that uh, Geetam has, and other institutes will also have once you uh, register for the event. So I would request all of you to please visit our website uh, for more details and for registration. Uh, before I finish, I will just uh, plug in a little bit more about SciRoy and mention that we do have more informative events. And next Saturday, we are organizing another webinar on how to move to industry from an academic position. And if you're interested, please visit our website and uh, for more details and register. Uh, with this, I will pass on, um, I think, to, um, to Mr. Bharat, if you would like to take it on from here. Thank you all. Sure, sir. So, uh, so I think we have a relatively um, a small audience in the sense that uh, we would appreciate taking your questions. And I think we will have the time to answer your questions. Uh, so whoever is participating, uh, um, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your time. And uh, I'm just looking at the names. There seems to be one uh, familiar name. I feel like I've seen that name before, uh, but the rest all are new to me. Um, so just a brief about Geetam, uh, I'd like to introduce you to the organization and then uh, speak about what we are looking for. and. Uh, then I think we'll have Professor Varia speaking after me, uh, speaking about uh, sort of the academic transformation that the organization is uh, working on. And we have uh, the three deans here. So Gitam is a multi-campus university. We have three campuses in Vishakhapatnam, Hyderabad, and Bangalore. And uh, Vishakhapatnam is the head campus. That's where we were founded in 1980. 
over the last uh, 15 years, we've opened campuses in Hyderabad and in Bangalore also. So the, these three programs that you see here, if you can see the deans right now, are the only three programs that exist in all three campuses. So we have engineering in all three campuses, we have management in all three campuses, and we have the science program in all three campuses. Um, otherwise, some of the programs have some more schools. Um, in Vishakhapatnam, for example, we have a medical college, we have a nursing school, we have a paramedical program, we have law, architecture, pharmacy. Um, so it's, it's very diversified, uh, Vizag being the larger campus. So just uh, in terms of organizational vision mission, uh, for the last 41 years, we've um, done well as a good teaching organization based in South India, focused largely on engineering in our first uh, two and a half decades, and then pivoted to many other programs. Uh, the interest right now is to become a, a sort of a multidisciplinary global university that is offering education on par with some of the best institutions in the world. Uh, so my own uh, journey, so I'm similar to you in the sense that I've studied in the US and I've studied abroad. I did my undergrad at Purdue. I did a BS in industrial engineering and then I did a MBA, MA education at uh, Stanford, graduated in 2016 and then moved back to India. So my granddad is the founder of Githam and uh, his vision was to sort of give back to the society and uplift people through uh, access to education. The uh, challenges today that we see are many fold and I think... Uh, there is an urgent need to transform the way education is offered in the country if we want to compete with global organizations. So we are uh, interested uh, in looking at uh, uh, people like you who've studied abroad or who are doing some form of research in different parts of the world are looking to move back to India and are looking at opportunities with us. Um, so at Gitam, I think uh, it's not that we're limited to any particular domain. I don't know the, the members here. Uh, what background you come from, but uh, we are open to anyone who is uh, sort of interested in the vision of the organization, is able to uh, uh, see themselves contributing to the program that they may join and uh, are in it for the long term. So oftentimes what we found um, as challenges, particularly with uh, uh, recruitment, is that um, we, we, we spend a lot of time and effort in identifying good faculty members, uh, going through the process, making an offer, and uh, it, it, the sort of attrition is fairly high. It could be that people are constantly looking for opportunities to move every year, every two years when they're young. So um, my uh, ask to you all, the ones who are here, is if you are interested in institution building, if you are interested in sort of being resilient and leading to systemic change, uh, I, I would really encourage you to consider applying to Kitam for a faculty position. Uh, if you just, I just want to take a step back and look at the macro environment. Uh, challenges that we are seeing in the education ecosystem is that um, particularly in sort of the public versus private debate, if you look at the IITs or the ICERs or the IIMs, uh, largely those institutions have been sort of the symbols of excellence for the country for many decades. Uh, Professor Subramaniam, in fact, uh, has been a faculty member at IIT Madras all his life and is retired recently before joining us. Uh, so I don't want to make him feel bad. But uh, so my view of uh, the uh, public institutions is that uh, uh, they have uh, many excellent parts. Uh, they don't come together to form a good whole. Uh, the, the challenge being that uh, inter uh, sometimes intervention of the government and uh, lack of agency, lack of ownership at the top, tending to lead to bureaucracy and uh, slow decision making. And uh, people who are one level or two levels below leadership often get suffocated when they want to do something new because it takes them years to impact change at the institutional level. And uh, on the other side, uh, we have many private institutions uh, that are uh, good, that are working sort of on teaching, uh, but some of the challenges, I mean, uh, you may have observed that I, at least in this uh, video, that I don't have any white hair and I'm um, the youngest person sitting uh, in the audience. Uh, so I'm not here by design, I'm here by chance. My granddad passed away three years ago, and uh, that's what has made me step into this role. And uh, I think um, you, you, look, you take every crisis as an opportunity. And I think over here, 
if you see not just geeta many other organization that was founded by some benevolent donor a few decades ago they continue to call the shots and what happens is while the intentions are good uh, founders who have been leading organizations for 30 40 years have somehow lost sense of the ground reality of how agile organizations need to be today so uh, we want to look at gitam as uh, sort of being in the right place at the right time uh, we want to bring in the agility the dynamism the youth um in terms of the way we think in terms of the way we take decisions we want to be bold uh we really want to push boundaries we are not um uh, chasing a regular journey of teaching or a regular journey of doing things for the sake of ticking a box and getting a ranking or an accreditation that is not our interest yes we want to be a global 100 university by 2040 that is a goal that we have built for ourselves but uh, the goal to me is just a means to an end i think it the more important thing is to inculcate a culture of the pursuit of excellence and to do so through very clearly demonstrated values i think the values that are very important uh, to us because geetam is named after gandhi is what did gandhi ji stand for he, he stood for truth he stood for ahimsa he stood for resilience he stood for courage he stood for service to society i think in today's society we are seeing very less of that particularly the way i look at uh, the world in india through my lens It, there's a there's an urgent need to inculcate these values in our students by the time they graduate they walk away with that badge of pride that a geetam student is different from any other university so in order to do that i think as leaders we need to follow that um we need to ensure that our faculty members follow that and then ultimately it will rub off on the students so the challenge that we've embarked upon because we are a 40 year old organization it's not an easy it's not an easy task change management uh, takes time we are a 23000 student organization we have about 1400 faculty members um so this is a very large organization to change right so we have many bright spots we have many uh, great uh, uh, researchers many great teachers but for systemic change i think uh, a lot more effort needs to be done so we look at you particularly the ones who have been exposed to high quality organizations in different part of the world to come and be uh, leaders of that change uh, by uh, walking the talk the way you teach the way you update your curriculum the way you do research you should be an inspiration to your department to your institution to the wider university because we don't also i think another thing that i'd like to emphasize is uh, we want to break the silos of individual disciplines many of you may have experienced being able to do courses across the board in different uh, uh, schools within the universities that you studied at india still hasn't lost that rigidity but uh, uh, riding on the coattails of the new education policy we really want to inculcate those best practices being able to offer multidisciplinary learning programs to our students taking on collaborative research projects cutting across not just the three disciplines over here but all of the other disciplines that uh, are represented at uh, geeta so this so basically the way i would see is uh, uh, there is so much potential to be realized uh, we are looking at champions at the at the ground level who would actually be driving the research who would be driving the teaching who are passionate and who have the resilience uh, to be excited by the idea of institution building because uh, for those of you who are more focused on i want to have a safe career that will pay me x amount of money um i think it's better for you to look at something like an iit or an is icer or something like that right because there the mindset is once you get in no matter what you'll be there till retirement uh, whether you teach or not what we want over here is uh, people who have that fire in the belly people who have seen education in india have seen education in the us believe that a uh, lot more agency is required at every level to drive ownership in the culture in the students to transform the way we teach to transform the way we do research um so those are the things that we are looking for in terms of sort of attitude i think um in terms of your resume and the, and your application your interview i think our leaders will easily be able to identify uh, your skill level your knowledge level and your passion for research i think those will clearly be displayed but it's the attitude that we can't really tell the attitude will show up when you actually join the organization when you start work so i, I would really ask you to look inward question yourself are you uh, someone who is passionate about institution building are you someone who is driven by this vision to build an institution of excellence and uh, can you be uh, that leader in the future 
and uh, if you can and then i would really encourage you to uh, look at us to apply to us and to go through the process and hopefully join us in the near future thank you professor varia maybe you can you can go you're on mute yeah sure but thank you i i'll just uh good morning to all participants uh, so this is basically my Sorry, share my screen. So I just have a small presentation which I just run run you through. Yeah. Uh, so the president uh, out, outlined the vision of the university. Now I'll just take you uh, uh, take you through the journey, so a little bit about the journey that we have gone through, and where we are actually headed as far as the teaching learning process, the academics, and also a little bit on the research part. So, as we as just to put a timeline on it, Kitam started in 1980 as an engineering college. It got a deemed to be university status in 2007, and. Uh, then the, we um, went to the campus, uh, Hyderabad campus was built in 2009 and the Bangalore campus came up in 2012. So now what we are doing is we are starting to build the centers of excellence uh, and we want to march forward so that we can actually meet the vision that we have put, us, uh, put forward, which is basically for 20, uh, to, to become a, a reputed university by 2014. Uh, currently, just to give you a thing, we are accredited. It's not that we are uh, looking, we are an AK plus. We are actually recognized as a category M. Uh, so, so we have all the laurels. For example, UGC has given us the 12B status, which means that we can apply for UGC grants. We get subsidy from the, we get uh, uh, tax, uh, uh, we, uh, we have benefit from tax reverses through the DST. We also follow quality processes. All these are, I mean, it, it's not that we are not doing these, we are at some level. And if you look at the rankings at NIRF, for the NIRF ranking, we have been continuously improving. And over a period of time, we expect to obviously be one of the leading institutes in the world, in India, in the next few years. And currently, in the, we are ranked in the world university rankings. And in the QS ranking, we have managed to, we, we, we are now QS Asia, we are ranked between 500, 500 to 550. And as far as THE, we, the new rankings are coming in and the, somewhere around 1st June. There is, so in terms of both accreditation and ranking, we are doing fairly well compared to uh, for a typical Indian university. But that's not our aspiration. We want to really be uh, somebody who's known for both setting, setting, not just setting the goalposts or the boundaries, but actually pushing the pushing the experience, pushing the research, and pushing the knowledge forward. So it, it is a big challenge. So if you look at the facts and figures, we have 19 institutes currently. We have it's divided across 11 faculties. So like for example, the sciences, management, and engineering are different faculties. We have a medicines faculty. There are, we have about 52 departments, and currently we have organized ourselves with around 10 research centers. Now, all these are numbers, but then uh, what we want to do is actually move forward to a higher quality. So we currently have about 200 programs, 1,300 faculty, and about 1,500 supporting staff. And we also are uh, have been attracting 15 uh, research scholars, so there are currently 1,500 research scholars. In fact, for the uh, in the even semester, that is, in, uh, normally we take PhD admissions twice a year. The main recruiting pool is usually in July, the uh, and that's where we get the bulk of the application. But this time in the uh, April, uh, uh, we have managed to attract about 1,500 students, and that shows, in some sense, that some of the changes that we have uh, taken we have made have actually started making impact in the outside world. So in terms of getting students, if you want to pursue your research, it's likely that you will find some high quality students. Now. 
Now, the three pillars as far as we are concerned is research, service, and teaching. Now, for me, teaching is the hygiene part. Research is something that you try with your passion, and I'm sure all of you have now, I mean, those who are in this audience who are working in the US, I don't really need to tell you what research, what is research. You are, it is because of your passion that you've gone there and you are highly trained. So, uh, so I don't, but teaching for us is a hygiene. That's a, because uh, as uh, the president said, we, we are still a teaching, you know, we, we still, uh, our, our bulk of our revenue comes from teaching. So our primary customer is still the student we need to focus on, we do focus on teaching, but there's a lot of avenue for the subject. Now for the teaching, we currently follow a semester-based system. And from the next semester onwards, we will start, we'll move to a course-based registration. And what this means is that the student, ultimately the student will be able to select the time, location, and the faculty who's offering the course. Why do I say location? Because what I mean is if the course is offered in Bangalore, Bangalore and the student is in Hyderabad or Vishakhapatnam, if they, they are preferring a, a certain faculty member, they can continue to take it. So we are also revising the undergraduate programs in the, the three schools that were on here, here for the 21-22 uh, and also the humanities. Uh, so basically there will be a university core. This is for the all-round development of the student. What the president said, you know, we want to make sure that the students who go out represent a certain, not a skill set alone, the values, the environment of all the cultural events, etc. So there's also a faculty core subject, program directors. These are typical things. What we have introduced in this is that about 25% of the program, roughly, uh, sorry, about 18% of the program is roughly open electives. So students can cut across two subjects across other, other programs. We are also offering minors. What this means is that a student, it doesn't matter, the student can choose, of a, he has come in for engineering, he can also computer science engineering, which is bulk of our student, bulk of our student, undergraduate students, the, the student can also choose a minor in psychology. So we are trying to open up the system. We are, to, we are trying to be as accommodative to the current needs. It's not just the current needs. We, be, we also believe that this is the future way to, to. And what we are now emphasizing increasingly is that the students should actually bring their own device. Of course, in this pandemic, it really doesn't matter. They are all having a device in which they are, most of our classes are currently online. So they do have a device. But once they come back physically into the classes also, we expect them to bring their own device. What this means is it's a totally different pedagogy. It's very different from where we were. We said you could not touch your mobile, you could not touch your device, et cetera. We are moving away from that. Okay. So as far as the infrastructure is concerned, we currently operate an LMS called Moodle, and that's run on the Amazon Web Service. We are in the process of customization based on the faculty. It's only been a, a year. We also use Coursera. I'm sure you are aware of this MOOC platform. Heavily, we have a tie-up with them. Uh, many of our students actually do Coursera. We do assign them content on Coursera to complete it. Grammarly is a software which actually teaches students to write better. And we, uh, of course, the adoption has been, as I, I'm, I think I have some data to show you the adoption is a little poor. But what I want to show, emphasize is that for a, for a teaching experience, we are really willing to go the extra mile. So we have invested in you know, all these sorts of things. Zoom, of course, as you are familiar, so we continue to use Zoom and we are, of course, member of the G Suite and Microsoft. What we are proposing, probably from the next year, of our next academic year, we'll have a unified virtual desktop interface. What this means is that for all computing purposes, the student can just log in. It doesn't, it's device independent and the compute will actually happen on the cloud. So we are also, and for those of you who are interested in computational research, we, this, this system will also allow us to offer high performance computing facility in the background. We also have heavily invested into our knowledge research center. We are now currently moving from a physical, physically held library to a electronic management system. So 
the large the collections are very uh, fairly large i don't know the, some of the textbooks which are available in new format by pearson wiley cambridge etc are uh, available okay and journals uh, sorry most of the journals if you want to know what the journals are you can actually click on this link you will get a whole list of journals that we currently subscribe to we are fairly uh, rich in the uh, collection of journals and we do based on the need we do subscribe to additional journals if you have a near, if there is a need that your specialized area is not being covered which is possible because nobody has not highlighted this before and this is now why i show this uh, adoption is this thing we do struggle right in adopting a new technology or any of these things so one of the things which we expect our leaders to do our teachers faculty members to do is push the latest the technology understand it first make sure that it can be assimilated you assimilate it first and then roll it out to the students so we are better than most universities as per coursera because typically the update you know the subscription is its utilization goes around 80% we are at least 90% we have been in the forefront of making sure that the plagiarism check is enabled because so our students now know that uh, these are high, these are hygiene issues which are typically in india so what i would like to emphasize is we do think far ahead into in some areas to make sure that the best is available for the students uh grammarly for example the adoption is poor i just wanted to show you one where we have great adoption the other way we do not have poor, we have poor adoption and we are trying to push that to make sure that so these are the challenges some of the challenges that you are going to face when you uh, when you join us uh and i'm sure you will also you will have to think about ways to make sure that the students though it's not just as of us offering the area areas but also make sure that the students actually use the facility so what we have done is we have actually we use a blended learning approach which means you know, some of the material is actually covered on a given online using the moodle which is the lms approach so eventually this to as i said the students in one campus will should be able to take program courses that's necessary for the program in the other campus so our infrastructure is being upgraded for this so the basic infrastructure in the class will have audio streaming capability so a high resolution production system which means that high high speed internet for video streaming will be possible so if you want to conduct a, you want to live stream a lecture in your class it's possible you have an expert from some other some other location you can easily stream it without any and motorized writing boards for example with cameras to capture so if you're writing on it there is a camera which captures and if student is sitting in another campus you can actually see what you're writing on the board and we also have a document camera etc other than this this is for the ground level classrooms we are also investing in state of the art infrastructure for the larger classrooms all this the infrastructure is as i would say the easiest thing to do now using it requires training and skills we also invest quite heavily in making sure that you are skilled as a, why i am emphasizing this is that the teaching is actually a hygiene requirement for us and after that the from a phased phased implementation point of view we have divided it into three phases i am not going to say we are currently in the in the, in the uh, in phase 2 but over a period phase 3 we will enable significant I and mean, we will have some significant capability in this sorry this one minute i this the screen froze yeah so what we do is we actually yeah we we have for for our training teaching or teaching we have actually tied up with harappa for example 
and we actually have we do we do you know recognize the need for student centricity which is one of our key pillars we analyze we try and analyze the student motivation create a learning experience and we expect our faculty to design effective lesson plans and engage them in it. so all this you know we we actually have continuous workshops on how to teach so the we do we don't send you off on a so recruit you and then send you off to teach we actually put in uh, put in a significant the infrastructures of will be there and we also train you to make sure that you're teaching us up front why i'm saying this is over a period of time teaching will become something that's natural to you so if you are after that it's only the research part which anyway you will i'm sure you will be adept at and you will be concentrated on so the way forward as we see in academic year 21 from 21 22 we'll have curated on uh, online lecture lectures especially for the common courses and we will also start sharing movements learning movements through polls breakouts in zoom and harappa uh, some using some tools and we will in most cases we will make sure that you have a assistant to every faculty so this is basically for your online course management everything and also help in the curation this is where we are headed to sorry i'm having trouble with the yeah i think like right. uh so the research part we currently have about around 9500 uh, publications we have uh, we have had on the web of science about 1700 scopus about 50 and on google scholar scholar about 7900 and we are doing fairly well compared to our you know some of the other indian institutes peer institutes we have been successful in continuing to publish in high quality journals so even the door during the pandemic we have actually we believe that we have actually improved in quality so this is this gives you an impact uh, idea of what is the kind of faculty that we have you know the you know the h index is fairly high you know with our, with our, with my colleagues so you, when you're joining you're joining a set of peers who are fairly in some way are fairly productive in research and so we do as well, the president said we do have i have you know some who are fairly eminent excellent and you may be able to add value to it and it's not just that the diversity that we bring in unlike many of the universities uh, uh, bharat compared about the iits iims etc they you need a you need no unidimensional in my opinion for example in the vishakhapatnam campus there is the medical schools medical school the physiotherapy there is law architecture etc and there's a huge breadth and humanities etc what this allows you to do is actually explore with your colleagues in building unlike in a typical us university these are usually available but in india in most places you do not get this kind of diversity so for example i have a colleague in the medical school who actually has been experimenting on the, doing ct scans of his vena to try and understand what is going on so that's a kind of interest you know the, we do have the infrastructure we also have the enthusiasm of some of in our colleagues to actually drive the research forward we are we do i mean if you look at the sponsorship we do get it from a very diverse set and uh, currently we do, we do attract a significant amount of I mean, because we have a 12b status so in many cases it opens a lot of doors for us so if if you are associated with gita there there are high very good funding opportunities at the national level so this is roughly what we we think is the way that we are going forward so there are two part two graphs which i see which i have said that the teaching part 
you know, we will reach into a sustain mode much earlier because we, though we are a teaching university, we need to completely, you know, in, in a sense, become very student centric, use more modern skills, et cetera. So there is a build up, there is a build phase and a growth phase, which we want to quickly do. For research, we do, you know, in some sense, it will take time. We are not, we are nowhere there. So finally, ultimately, when we need to go to become a top university, we, we do have some infrastructure. We will continue to build. And for building that and taking part in this journey, we need expertise that you will actually bring in. Uh, that's all I had to share. Uh, if there are any questions or uh, anything else, that's good. Thank you. So the question, the questions are up. Can you can we start answering those questions? I think uh, uh, Prakash had his first question about. Uh, can you cover information about the Centers for Excellence, uh, Professor Vijay, or maybe others? Uh, um, when asking the question, it can it will be helpful to us if you can also tell us um, what's your sort of research specialization and um, what's your focus area so that uh, the answers can be catered to your background. Uh, so perhaps I can give you a quick overview. The, the Centers of Excellence currently, at least in uh, more engineering related that I can relate to or uh, uh, Center for Aerospace Design. We have it in Hyderabad uh, where, where a lot of projects are obviously related to aerospace uh, and aircraft design and things like that. And then followed by uh, a couple of centers that are uh, relatively new, uh, one in uh, virtual reality and uh, extended reality uh, where students get to do uh, different types of projects in that uh, area. And then uh, we also have one Center for Autonomous Systems. These are engineering ones. Uh, I am familiar with, uh, uh, there's one thing called Center for uh, Artificial Art, uh, maybe Art. I think the actual title of the center itself may be Life Sciences or something, but these are the four centers that I'm aware of. Uh, um, um, uh, we are building many other centers uh, as we speak. Yeah, maybe I can add a few things. We have Center for uh, Cancer Biology, which is taking up a large number of projects and a large number of people are working on that. And we have Center for Health and Wellness. And uh, this center is mostly concentrating on the food science environment. And in the environmental science, we have a center coming up on uh, waste to wealth management, particularly in Vishakhapatnam because Vishakhapatnam is considered to be a smart city. So there is a lot of uh, municipal waste and other wastes are coming up and that is being converted into electrical energy. So these centers are working. A few more centers are in the uh, forming stage. Thank you. Right, in the, in the area of management, uh, we have recently set up a center of excellence for social entrepreneurship. And we are in the process of setting up more centers in the area of circular economy, capital markets and financial risk management, corporate governance, ethics and accountability. Thank you. Professor Subramaniam, there is a question on biotech, on uh, opportunities for biotech in all your campuses. Yeah, uh, it is uh, Dr. Divya Binoy Joseph is asking. Do you have opportunities in biotech in all the on all the campuses? In principle, yes, but the major research is being taken up in Vishakhapatnam, mainly because of the infrastructure. But the other center people are also collaborating, and slowly the centers are coming up. So, so to say, right now it is Vishakhapatnam campus which is in vibrant activity. Small activity is taking place both in Bangalore as well as in Hyderabad. Bhavana Tiwari to all the panelists. Where is the Cancer Biology Center? This is in Vishakhapatnam. This is in the chat. Uh, do you have Life Sciences Center at Bangalore? It's coming up. The Life Sciences Center at Bangalore is coming up. There is a question also on uh, chemical physics, quantum optics, quantum information science. 
One minute, let me just go through the question. Jay, I couldn't see that question. Is there any center coming up related to chemical physics, quantum optics, quantum information science? Can yeah, there is. I, I don't say there is a center, but active research is going on in quantum optics. And uh, there is a uh, significant expertise available in uh, optical fibers and quantum optics. Yes, this is operating from Bangalore. Uh, there's also a question on, can you give us an overview of the various facilities available for basic science research or preclinical research? Uh, I can attempt that. I, I think, let me see the question. It's in, I just said answered live, so it should be an answered, sir. Go to okay. the answered question and go to the bottom, you should be able to find it. Uh, one minute. Yeah. Uh, yes. The main point is about uh, the facilities available. There are the basic facilities available in terms of all the basic sciences like, my, uh, like physics, chemistry, and environmental science, biochemistry, microbiology, and food science and technology. The facilities being common, most of them can be used as a common facilities. And I would like to say 80% of the basic research facilities are available for almost any basic sciences that we would like to tackle. Uh, if you want more details, probably I can answer you uh, with more specific details over an email or maybe in our next interaction. Uh, Divya, your question on split between research and teaching. Typically, our expectation in the initial stages is around roughly about 12 hours. But that, uh, if you are research, more research focused, we give uh, an abeyance on that. So we talk that off there. But uh, as I said, you know, teaching is important to us. Good teaching, not teaching. Good teaching is important to us. So we do expect, but we are not a hardcore teaching house. Uh, Jay, can I go with the question of uh, Venkat Sudhakar? Yeah. His question is, research area includes genomics of rare diseases and development of advanced genomic solutions for disease diagnosis. Uh, what are the chances, prospects for young investigators who are already working as regular faculty in premier research institutes in India? Yes, I should say the, the, the prospects are quite good and uh, there is a lot of work going on in genomics and there is a lot of collaborations are also going on, so it is possible. That should be my question, to, I mean, my answer to Venkat Shudak. Professor Varya, there's a bunch of questions on chemistry. Maybe you can, they're in the chat and in the Q&A box. Yeah, chat also, there are a few questions. Okay. So uh, I uh, uh, Bharat, there's one for, for you uh, from Pratik Benhal on the uh, question and answer. Vijay and uh, I'll read the other. No, I, see, I, see, I, I, see, I see the question. Yeah. Um, so I think we're, we're seeing um, sort of very specific questions about um, each individual sort of research area and uh, and detailed questions. I think um, we may not do justice to all of the questions that are being asked, uh, asked here uh, purely for the paucity of time. But uh, Professor Subramanya, maybe we can uh, give them an email ID where they can actually mail these questions and we can respond to them. Maybe Manali can coordinate uh, on, on that. Uh, in terms of uh, vision, uh, Pratik, can you uh, tell me um, what about the vision is uh, 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 sort of open-ended to you so that I can answer that because I can keep going on and on about vision. So I want to limit my response to the areas that you are curious about. Uh, 
Professor Arya, in the meanwhile, you can look at the... Yeah, I, I've just, uh, I'm, repl okay, I'm replying to Prakash. Uh, I, we do have a material science developer of faculty colleagues who are focused on material science. And there are so the excel, you know, the, most of the currently the facilities are better at Vishakapatnam. That's where we are focused on. And we do plan you know, over a period of it's, uh, the centers, it may not just be on material research, but as, as Vijay pointed out, many of the engineering centers which are being established on the engineering school will require materials in some way or the other. So it, it could be a question of fitting, uh, moving to one of these centers, or if there is something specific, we can always think about that. Uh, Indrani, the, there is a strong bio, uh, bioinformatics group. Again, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm aware of the capability in Vishakhapatnam, uh, and I believe there are uh, the, there is a faculty colleague out, uh, outside in Bangalore, and it is for their computing needs that we are actually looking for a high performance High performance computing system. Yeah. So I so Pratik clarified his question. So he wants to know about the vision in terms of developing the next generation of scientists and uh, lecturers from Gita. Um, so I think uh, again, sort of uh, building on um, the my understanding of the larger higher education ecosystem in terms of uh, the amount of money that is available for research and uh, the number of organizations that are pursuing that. So uh, for us, uh, we are not interested in any um, short-term outcomes. So I, I think we are not chasing uh, paper publications or patents or projects for the sake of achieving uh, better ranking on NIRF or QS or Times Higher Education next year, right? So uh, a lot of the work that we're doing is actually foundational in nature. And it will take us a few years uh, to actually uh, see the results of those investments that we're making today. So uh, if you, uh, so the thing is, uh, what is, we're going to the root cause. If you look at the leaders here, all of the four leaders who are sitting here are people who have been with Gitam for uh, under three years. And uh, so they've all joined Gitam after I've come into this position. And uh, the idea is that, uh, we need to sort of uh, fix uh, problems from uh, the top and percolate it to uh, the lowest level. So what does that mean? So we need to first understand whose role is what, empower them to do that role and ensure that that empowerment passes down. Um, now, if you look at uh, the, the level of intervention that we're working on, it's largely um, at a deans of disciplines, heads of institutions. Uh, the next area that some of our deans are working on is the heads of the departments. Because as a faculty member, when you were to, if you were to join Gitam, you would join a department and you would be working very closely with your departmental colleagues on research or on teaching and obviously collaborating beyond that for any uh, joint projects or joint teaching exercises. So I think until we fix that system effectively, I don't think we will be able to create an ecosystem where the next gen scientists will form. Because uh, what we're trying to do is, let us say five years from now, seven years from now, uh, we are a place in every discipline where there will be high quality research going on and it will, it will be attracting the best talent from uh, across the world. But in order to get there, we need to actually figure out how does the system work in terms of suppose you join us as a faculty, how much teaching load will you have? How much time will you have to do, to do research? Who decides on those things? Uh, how are we going to uh, create uh, thrust areas for research? How are we going to create uh, create research seed grants, create the research equipment uh, if necessary to enable you to sort of um, go for uh, project proposals, apply to funds from the central government, from uh, potentially the uh, for-profit sector also. So that, those are the things that we're looking at. And uh, we also... Uh, think that you, you cannot do anything alone, right? You need to be able to work in an ecosystem where you have all of the scaffolding that enables you to really aim for the stars. So that, that's the kind of work that we're doing on. And uh, in terms of, again, uh, the kind of research that you do, we would like it to be very translational, uh, translational uh, becoming more practical, uh, translating to patents, products, ideas. Um, so that's something that we're really keen about. And uh, in each domain, what do we need? 
I think the deans here will be able to better answer that question. Um, in terms of uh, the load of the faculty member, we want to be an organization that becomes sort of very individual driven in the sense that some individuals may be very good at uh, doing research and some individuals may be very good at teaching. So I think you cannot avoid doing research. So uh, in the case that you really like teaching, then you, it may be like a 70, 30 teaching research time spent. But in the case that you really want to do a lot of research, then it may be the flip. You may do 30% teaching and 70% of your time may be spent on doing research. So that's, uh, we want to build in that flexibility for all of our faculty members. Um, so we are moving in that direction. We are not there yet, but I think the deans have been working very hard on creating an ecosystem where that kind of an environment is uh, created. Okay, so I think I've answered Pratik's question. Um, if, so in terms of, uh, there's another question about tenure. I think we answered that also. Uh, Sathvik's question I can answer. Uh, I think the basic thing is there are animal house facilities, both Sathvik and Anand. There are animal house facilities available at by Vishakhapatnam. Uh, in terms of microscope facilities, I, I cannot comment about the state of the art of that, but I do know that the, there are facilities available. Uh, and if, if you need a specific type of microscope facility, You'll have to write. Uh, you'll have to write to us, and then we'll be able to. Okay, so I think we're we're fine. And how are we on time, sir? When are we done? Yeah, I think it's almost getting another five more minutes. We are we are done. Got it. Any other questions that we haven't answered? Uh, there's one question uh, by uh, so. Dr. Sudhakar on genomics, uh, we'll have to take that uh, separately. We'll have to answer to him directly. I don't think we have the expertise. Okay. Yeah, in fact, I have given my email ID in the chat box. Uh, any specific questions can be addressed and we would like to answer them as soon as possible, depending upon the question. I'll gather all the information and I'll, I will send a reply. So, Maria, there's some questions in the chat also. Yeah, uh, Bhavna, the how uh, faculty position in cancer biology, what I would suggest is you please, because right now there is a general process that's going on. You can apply through that, or through, it's there on the web, GitHub website. The other is that you can always write through, through Skyro, you can write to Professor Subramaniam, who the Professor Subramaniam is the chair of the recruiting. Uh, uh, Sudhakar's question, as I said, I cannot answer answer it. Um, Sumantha's question, yes, we do have facilities in organic chemistry, uh, though we do not have an NMR, which I know I understand for you as an organic chemist, you might uh, think. We, we are in the process of acquiring one, a low field NMR. So, uh, but there are uh, with the facility. If you're, if you're on the Hyderabad campus, we would have access because the IIT Hyderabad is close by. Uh, my university of uh, Madhu, your uh, question on electron cryo. We do have X-ray crystallography, but we do not have cryo-electron microscopy right now. Uh, so, but as I said, there is an excellent uh, medical center, uh, medical school. So if you tie up with them, probably your other parts of developing vaccines and therapeutics probably is much would be much easier. Most universities in India do not have this kind of breadth. So yeah, I, I think uh, I have. I'm as far as I'm concerned, I think I've done everything from the chat box. Yeah, I think we address we we at least uh, touch touched upon all the questions. Any specific questions we can take up as and when they come. And uh, anything more points to be added, Bharat Garu? I think we're good, sir. Uh, Jay, any more? Yeah, points? I'm fine. I'm fine. Uh, uh, thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vijay, would you like to add anything? No, sir. I'm fine. Thank you. Gautam Garu. Yeah, yeah. I'm fine too, sir. Okay. Thank you very much.
Manali, more or less we are done. And uh, thank you so much for joining us today. And to I you. just wanted to uh, mention to our attendees that you can see how much Geetam is passionate about taking you all in, making uh, research and teaching like, uh, you know, points of excellence at Geetam because they are coming and they are trying to engage you in this discussion even before our recruitment drive is starting. Great. So uh, please, please uh, go to our website and register for the drive and uh, the application form for Geetam will be available there. Uh, so please uh, apply and you know, uh, we'll go through the shortlisting process and then the interview in the coming month. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank you all of uh, you for coming and having this discussion today and have a good day ahead. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Good day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.